He never wore. I'll bet you he's packing it right now. I'll bet you. Charlie, a fella shaved in the middle of the week, and you'd figure he's about to get married. Everybody except you, Hawks. You can shave all week, and no woman would have you. <laughs> now, put that mud down. Put it down. There he is. Go ahead and ask him. Ask him. Ask him. All set to go, Duke? All set. Hey, Duke, Bill wants to know if you're going back to see your sweetheart. You got the little tie Charlie. Well, you could say that, I guess. See, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? It's a small piece of land. Land? Well, land bear, huh? Well, I always wanted to know one. Huh. Pleasure's been all mine. Sorry to disappoint you, Charlie. Well, I'm not. Hawk. Put that down. We'll be camping outside of Logan in five days, Duke. I'll be there, Chris. Alone. Yeah. He'll be back, but not alone. You wait and see. Now cut it out. Cut <laughs> it out. <laughs> Tom. Tom. They're gone. <sighs> They're gone, Tom. <sighs> your shawl over his back. Oh. Who did this? We don't know. Mary. <sighs> Tell me, who did this? We don't know, do you hear? We don't know nothing, so... So leave us be! What are you sneaking around here for, mister? I suppose you've got a good reason? Best. I own half this place. Oh? Name's Shannon. I expected to find Jim Whitlow here. Shannon, huh? How do I know that? I can prove it if I have to. Mr. Uh... Clyde Hubble. Well, Mr. Hubble, maybe you can tell me what happened to Jim Whitlow. He and his missus built a big new house about a half a mile in the valley. Big house? I'm glad to hear he's done so well. Well, he's done just fine. Since I started working for him. You live here? That's right. I'm the foreman. This goes with the job. The way the place looks, maybe you shouldn't have the job. Now you look here, Shannon. No, you look. Shannon's Glen has never looked this bad before. It's not going to look this way again. Finally come back, huh? Yeah, that's his mistake.
Hello, Duke. Oh, Margaret Lindley, I do believe. No. Margaret Whitlow now, four years ago. Well, good for Jim. He picked the prettiest gal in town. Really? You never told me that before. Oh, I must have. You're even prettier now. Well, that deserves an invitation to food and drink. Come on. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw you. Would you like a drink, too? Oh, no thanks. Too early in the day for me. Well, then I'll put some coffee on. I think it's great about you and Jim. And all this. How do you ever do it? Well, he can tell you more easily than I can. Where is that dude, anyway? With all the hands at the sheep range, rounding up. Sheep range? Mm -hmm. It's about a half day's ride from here. Just, just in case. I thought I'd be back by now. Sheep. So that's the way he's done it. Well, that's part of it. What about you, Duke? You've been gone a long time. Not even a letter. I never was much of a letter writer. After the war, I decided I wanted to see more of the country and kind of help bring it back together. And have you seen it? Some, but there's still a lot to go. You mean you're not staying? I, I work for a wagon train on its way to California. I'm supposed to meet up with them at Logan in a few days. But there's so much for you here. You don't understand. There's one I... half of 10,000 acres. Half of what? When you gave Jim half of Shannon's Glen, you both agreed to divide everything equally, didn't you? Well, sure, well, but... Well, now you and Jim own 10,000 acres. 10,000 acres? 10,000 acres? No wonder he doesn't have a chance to look in on the old place. Oh, you stopped by the Glen? Uh-huh. I didn't like what I saw. Or oh, that fella Hubble, either. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I, I was just wondering. Well, if Jim wants him living there, all right. But as long as he does, he's going to have to take care of it. Jim will see to it that he does, Duke. But don't you argue with Hubble. I don't intend to argue. I mean, he might... Well, he's, he's very quick-tempered. He's quick to use that gun, too, I guess. Never expected to find someone like him living at the old place. I know it's it's hard to approve of Hubble, but, well, he has been a big help to Jim when Jim really needed help. It's just that he's, well, as I said, hot-tempered. You sound as if I should walk wide of him. Oh, no, no, I, I, I don't mean that. It's, well, it's just that Jim hired him, so I think it's Jim's place to tell him. Fine. But if he doesn't, I will. I'd better check the coffee. I'll make you sandwich, too. Oh, Margaret, does Hubble own a bullwhip? What makes you ask that? Uh, on my way here, I... That must be Jim. I'll look. Yes, it is. You better get ready to catch him when he sees you. Where is he? Where is that big, handsome brute? How do you know you were here? I ought to toss you right out of here. And I would if I could. You'll never know until you try. No, not me. Well, where you been? What kept you away? If I had known how rich you were making us, I wouldn't have stayed away so long. <laughs> uh, there's lots to tell you. Let me start off by congratulating you on being a husband. Well, you're four years late, but better than never. Ah, <laughs> look at him, Margaret. He's forgotten the feel of this stuff. That proves you've been away too long. It's never too long to forget that, Jim. Oh, it's not worth even a minute. Come on, I'll pour us a drink. Oh, the coffee. Yeah. Who wants coffee? Duke does. Oh, uh, there's only one thing that'll cut the sheet dust from your throat. You know, when Hubble told me you were here, I could hardly believe it. I was beginning to think you were afraid to come back. Afraid of what? That you'd have to take care of your crippled friend all over again. <laughs> you know better than that. All this proves that you never did need me. Well, it's a little luck and uh, a lot of hard work, Duke. Foreman Hubble thinks he's the reason. Ah, uh, he likes to feel important. Important enough to own a bullwhip? He owns one? Why? I think he used it on one of your neighbors today. Where'd you hear a thing like I that? I saw the man, Jim. I cut him down. I told him not to do that. Over and over again, I told him. 
Oh, I can understand how he feels sometimes, but... You can understand him? I can't even understand why you keep him around. I need him, Duke. I do. That man you saw today, he's not a neighbor, he's a tenant farmer. Tenant farmer? And he's refused to plant his full acreage, hoping that I'll break his contract. You mean he's working for you? For us, Duke. Him and 24 others just like him. 5,000 acres under the plow. It was hard to come by, and it's even harder to make it pay. Tenant farming is one inch short of slavery, Jim. It always brings about the misery I saw today. Duke, I don't like the kind of thing you saw today any more than you do. And Hubble knows that. But he's only doing it to protect us. I give those farmers a place to live, two horses, tools, and all I ask is a full day's work. Uh, they're willing enough till the harvest, and then they want most of that. I think a man should get more for his work than just a place to live. You sound sorry I've made us rich. I'd like to be rich, Jim. But it's how you make it that's more important. Having a bully boy around isn't my way. Well, that's easy for you to say. You got two hands. You don't need anybody. Oh, look, I, I tried to work the ranch just like we agreed. Margaret will tell you. I couldn't do it. All I could hire was drifters that just fill their bellies and then fat loose. And what could I do about it? Nothing. They saw I couldn't use a gun. I even tried to learn a left-handed draw. Almost shot myself doing it. I was an easy mark for any saddle tramp that came along. Till Clyde Hubble. He was willing to do his work and half of mine, too. Well, I know he gets rough sometimes, but it's to protect me, just the way you used to do. I never used a whip. Well, Hubble won't either. Not anymore. And the sooner he knows how we both feel about it, the better. I'll go with you. No, I can handle it. Believe me. Don't you want some coffee? Where are you going? I want to hear the farmer's side of the coin. Duke. Yes, Margaret? Then we'll be at six. I'll be here. Bye, Margaret. you before we got nothing to say all I want to know is if you and the others would be interested no we ain't now leave us be I meant every word mr. Mason believe me I don't believe nothing and your quiet talk ain't trapping me into saying I do so you can send your whipping boy after me again it's just what I'm trying to stop why I'd like to know you don't gain nothing you lose I don't claim to be smart but I ain't thick with it neither a skunk can't run with nothing but skunks you're wrong, Mr. Mason. But I can understand how you feel. <laughs> no, you can't, mister, and you never will. Unless you can feel that whip cutting into your back.
shouldn't have gone, Duke. You should have come to me first. Why are you so sure it was one of the farmers? Because I know these people. I know what they're capable of. Now make no mistake, I'll find out who did it, and I'll make him pay for it. Don't be so quick, Jim. You gotta be quick. Maybe now you'll understand why Hubble loses his temper sometimes. No, I don't. If one of them did try to shoot me, Hubble's the reason. Well, that doesn't make sense. You give them a house, horses, and tools. That's right, give them for nothing. And they barely make enough to feed themselves or the horses. And not enough to keep their houses in repair. That doesn't make sense. Well, they do all right if they just put their backs to it. And it doesn't make sense to have Hubble whipping them all the time. If they told you I ordered Hubble to do that, they're lying. I talked to a dozen of them. No one would say a thing. Yeah, they're good at lying, all right. They ought to be half as good at work, and then they wouldn't be in any trouble, but they're not. They could be. If we gave them a chance to buy in on the land, they work. You didn't tell them that, did you? Yes, I did. What? Well, you got no right! You... You just got no right at all! Why, it's taken me five years to, to get all of this. Five years! And all the time, you was just out wandering around, free as a bird. Now you come back like out of nowhere and you start giving it away like it was nothing. I'm not giving away a thing. The farmers will have to work for it. And I believe they'll work harder without being whipped into it. I told you I took care of that. Don't you believe me? You, yes. But not Hubble. Even you don't know when he uses that whip. And if the situation doesn't change, he's going to keep on using it. I'm not getting rid of Hubble. I told you, I need him. And I'm still half owner. I'm not forgetting that, Jim. That's why I'd like us to agree on the farmers. We can talk about Hubble later. Jim, maybe Duke's right. It might be easier for you and the farmers, and even for Hubble. Well, you always were quick to help somebody you thought was over a barrel, Duke. <laughs> stood by me for 11 years. I guess it shouldn't come as any surprise to me now, but... Well, I, I just want some time to think it over. About selling to the farmers, I mean. I haven't convinced the farmers to buy anything yet. What? They're all too scared to admit they like the idea. Well, that doesn't surprise me in the least. Believe me, people like that are just born scared. Nobody's born scared, Jim. That's something they have to learn. Well, and how come there's so many of them? Because there's so many Clyde Hubbles around to teach them. I told you. You need him. That's right. Well, I meant to mention it earlier, but... Well, I decided to stay at the old place tonight. Oh, but I... We wanted you to stay here. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot more comfortable. <laughs> yeah, it's that all right, but it's... Used to be home, and well, anyhow, it'll give me a chance to fix it up a little. I guess it could use some work, could it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I better be going now. Uh, wait a minute, Duke. Uh, Hubble's. Uh, well, uh, you and him didn't get along so good, and uh, uh, what I mean is, uh, I think I'd better tell him. Hubble doesn't scare me. No, that's not what I mean, but... Well, I just don't want you and him... Well, you know. And I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bite at you. No hard feelings? No. He'll be out of your way in half an hour. You're wondering the same thing I am. Wondering what? Whether Jim gives Hubble orders or takes them. Who do you think shot at me? I don't know, Duke. It, it could have been one of the farmers, like Jim said.
Now get on up the sheep ranch, you fool. That's all you're fit for. Well, it was the sun, Clyde. It blinded me. I couldn't help it. Now get out of here. I don't want to see you around here for a month. Huh? Shannon's luck's run out. I don't miss. How did Jim get to buy up all those other ranches? He got Mr. Garvey at the bank to take out a note on your ranch. How could he without me? After all you'd done for Jim, Mr. Garvey didn't question it. You really shouldn't object to that, Duke. I mean, look at all he's accomplished. That's just what I am looking at. I don't understand. Did Jim get the loan before or after Hubble started working for him? Before, a few weeks before. Are you sure? I'm not likely to forget it. That wasn't an easy time for Jim. He had already bought up the notes on the Talbot place and the Tylers and the Patton. When the notes fell due, nobody could pay. Jim asked them to leave, and they said they wouldn't. They called him a land grabber, said that he knew all along that they wouldn't have the money. Did he know? Nobody could know that, Duke. Did he give them any time to raise the money? Well, they asked him to, but well, Jim said he was a rancher, not a banker. It's an answer from a man who's either trying to fool someone or to hide something. Hide something? What? I, I don't know what you mean. Margaret, when a man wants to be a rancher, he doesn't end up with tenant farmers. That's a different breed. A breed who can foreclose mortgages, use a bullwhip, or even bushwhack a man. You don't think that Jim... Shoot at me? No. No, I can't believe that any more than I can believe that Jim wants to own these farmers. Unless he's forced into it. Hubble? It's the only answer that makes sense. What could Jim do about it? A one-armed man against a gunslinger. But I can do something about it. I'm glad you told me about the loan. Up to now, I felt like I was stealing half of everything that Jim had worked for. Duke, if what you're thinking is right, do you, do you think it's safe for you to be at the Glen alone, especially after what happened today? Anyone that's had better shot in the daylight doesn't worry me at night. Hubble was born with a gun in his hands. You can die the same way. Duke, be careful. Please. I'll be all right. So will Jim. I didn't know better, I'd figure this was a friendly visit. What's on your mind, Shannon? Didn't expect to see you here. No? And where did you expect to see me? Hasn't Jim been by in the past half hour to talk to you? He might have been. I just got back from town. Why? I'm moving in here for a couple of days. You're staying in the bunkhouse. You'd like to run me off, wouldn't you? I figure I'm doing it. So you better get your stuff together. I don't take orders from you. I don't work for your half. Jim Whitlow told me to live here, and when I get out, he'll tell me. Not some saddle tramp.
trouble. That's enough. Get out of my way, Jim, and I'll... You'll nothing, you hear me? He's not about to tell me where I'm going to live or anything else. Yes, he is. He's as much boss around here as I am, whether you like it or not. Now go inside and get your stuff. You're moving into the bunkhouse. Sorry, Duke. Stop by to see Mason or this would never have happened. Yeah, it would. He's been wanting to do this ever since I got here. Jim, Margaret told me how this whole thing got started. She doesn't know anything about this. I don't care about the loan. That's over and past. Even how it was used, that all can't be undone. But we can make up for it if we start by getting rid of Hubble. I won't. I can't do that. Has he got you scared, too? You can't repay a man's loyalty by kicking him out. Loyalty? Yes, to me. That's why he fought you. You used to do the same thing for me. But the reason was a lot different. And I didn't carry a whip and a gun. This little empire was built on somebody else's blood and sweat. And I don't want to have a thing to do with it. But since it was my ranch that started it, I figure I've got a right to stop it. Well, what about my blood, my sweat? Doesn't that give me some rights? I'm only talking about my half, Jim. Tomorrow, I'm going in to talk to Garver about those farms. I think you ought to be there, too. Now, wait a minute, Duke. You're acting kind of sudden. I mean, uh, there's a lot of things to consider. I know. 25 tenant farmers. Oh, look, Duke, you're all riled up. Tomorrow morning over a stack of buckwheats, why, we'll talk about it again. Calm and reasonable. Won't be any use. Well, I... I can try, can't I? Give it a good night's sleep for me, will you? I'll see you in the morning. Thought you told me you wouldn't have any trouble getting him to draw on you. Well, he, uh... Well, he caught me by surprise, didn't... I didn't have my gun on. Two chances in one day and you bungled them both. Now he's going into the bank tomorrow morning. He wants me to go with him. Bank? Why? Because his heart bleeds for those sod busters, just like I knew it would. What's he got in mind to do? Take away half of what's rightly all mine. He ain't taking nothing. I promise that. You got no more time for failures. You stick close to my house tomorrow morning. Keep your gun loose. I'll be ready. You better be. Told you four years ago this day had come. Jim up and about? Well, I don't think so. He drank pretty heavily last night. He didn't like it much that I told you everything. I'm sorry about that, but I had to tell him. I'm glad you did. But it... It, it seemed to be something more than that. He, he was beside himself. I couldn't tell if he was frightened or angry. Well, maybe it was a little bit of both. Hubble and I had a difference of opinion. And Jim sided with Hubble? In a way. Jim won't let him go. Well, then everything you said last night is true. And, Duke, it's going to get worse after you leave. I just know it. No, I don't think it will. That's why Jim and I are going to the bank this morning. The bank? If what I have in mind makes sense to Mr. Garvey, it'll take the wind out of Hubble's sails. Well, Jim didn't mention anything about it. Did he agree to go? I'm afraid I didn't give him much choice. And Hubble? He has nothing to say about it. You know, I suddenly get a feeling that it's just like when we were children. Jim always getting into something over his head, and you always there to pull him out of it. 
And me standing by watching you do it. I remember. Sorry. I'm sorry, Duke. Was it too long ago for you to remember? You did a lot better by Mary and Jim. I've been a good wife to Jim. I only married him because you two were so inseparable, and I... I hope that maybe some of you had rubbed off onto him. I know that sounds stupid now, but it didn't when I was 17. And then I guess I... I did feel sorry for him a little. A little sorry? She felt very sorry. That's not true, Jim. Oh, isn't it? Don't you think I know me who's seen nothing but pity ever since I was eight years old? What do you take me for? Jim, Margaret didn't mean what she said. So don't get around and start acting like a fool. Yeah, there's a fool here, all right. But you're pointing the finger in the wrong direction. A fool's a man who builds a little empire and then lets somebody come along and give it away, even if it's only half. So you do give the orders? That's right, Duke. Jim, what are you saying? And Hubble? He does what I tell him, just like everybody else. You're right, Jim. I am the fool. And if you don't like the fit of the hat, it's your own fault. When you made that old wagon fall on my hand, you made me less than a man, something for everybody to pity. The more you did for me, the worse it was. You remember how people used to say, Duke Shannon's such a wonderful boy. Why, he's a, he's a better right hand than poor Jimmy was ever born with. You remember those things. Never paid any mind to it, Jim. Oh, but I do. See, even when they weren't saying it, they were thinking it. You weren't my slave. I was yours. You didn't need me. But I needed you. And I hated your insides. And when you left, they all waited like vultures, wondering what the poor cripple was going to do on a ranch. It didn't take you very long to find another right hand, though, did it? And better than you, Duke. Because Hubble does what I tell him to. He makes sure everybody else does, too. Now nobody feels sorry for me, only themselves. I made sure of that, and it's going to stay that way. I'll give you back my half of Shannon's Glen. You sign away any claim to all the rest. That's the only deal we can make. You're a coward, Jim. Why, you never... You're rotten clear through. And I guess I'm to blame for it. I protected that rottenness all those years. But I did it because I felt responsible, not sorry. I never forced you to accept anything I offered. Oh, yes, you did. When you made that wagon fall. We all climbed on that wagon lots of times. We knew it would topple over sooner or later. You never should have put your arm underneath it. Now, wait a minute. I gave you everything I owned once. Well, now I'm taking it back. I'm selling my half interest in each of those farms to the farmer who lives and works on it. I'm selling it for one dollar. You made a bad choice, Duke. I made it a long time ago. In case you got it in your mind, I'm making sure you can't buy it back. Hold it right where you are, Shannon. He made the choice. You really want to win, don't you, Jim? Want to? I already have. You better take my offer or you'll never make it to that bank. Not unless you want to walk over me. Change your mind, Duke. You can't fool Hubble again, and you're no match for him at this range. I'm not as sure about that as you are. You underestimated me or overestimated him. That's what comes from letting someone else do your dirty work for you. Margaret, I'll see about you staying with someone in town. I'll be back.
That's just the way Duke's gonna look when I face him. Hubble looked the same way when I beat him to the draw. Hubble knew? He had to know. He took my orders because I was better than him at the only thing he could understand. How long have you? Three years. I practice so much, this gun practically jumps into my hand by itself. Jim, you can't do this. Everything you have, you owe to Duke. Your land, your, your money, or even the clothes on your back. You forgot to mention even my wife. And don't bother to pack. You're not leaving. You're talking, Jim. That's right. You're going to listen. That's why I'm wearing a gun. It's a bad bluff, Jim. Either that or you're lying about your left hand. Hold it, Duke. I'm warning you. Will you listen to reason? Oh, you better listen. Or else you're going to have to walk over me if you expect to go the rest of the way. All I'm taking is my half. It has nothing to do with yours. You won't lose a thing. You won't because you never owned it. Neither did you. You stole, cheated, and lied for it. That's right, because I wanted it. Now, I've got it, and I'm going to keep it. Sorry, Jim. And you better get rid of that gun before someone comes along and makes you prove you can use it. Feel sorry for yourself, Duke. Not for me. Because I can use this gun better than you can use yours. I've practiced three years. 
Just for you. For me? I know you, Duke. I knew how you'd feel. Everybody an even chance. That's your kind, and you'll never change. I hope I never do. For old times' sake, I'll give you one more chance to reconsider. I want to forget old times and old friends. Well, with Hubble around, I never thought I'd be the one to kill you. Maybe I'm even a little sorry about it. But that's how it's going to be. We just didn't know him. None of us. We didn't know him at all. I guess not. I'm sorry, Jim. No more pity, Margaret. I liked him enough when he was alive. We go on home now. I'll take care of him. When I get things settled, I'm, I'm leaving. I, I understand. Shouldn't be so soon. Ain't no surprise to me, no, sir. Oh, why not, Charlie? All this in them little small towns. Nothing ever changed there except maybe the population. Except maybe the population. <laughs> I heard you, Charlie. Well, you couldn't stay away from us, could you? <laughs> that was your smiling face I missed, Charlie. Oh. Glad to see you back, Duke. Find everything all right? Well, sure. You know how those small towns are, Chris. Nothing ever changes but the population. Hear that, Mr. 